I've been at Google for a little over two and a half years now, and a lot has happened during that time. I survived two layoffs, got promoted, and I've really established myself on my team at this point. If you're interested in working for Google or just want to know what it's like to work at a big tech company as a software engineer, this video is for you. If you're new here, my name is Michael. I make coding tutorials to help you pass your technical interviews, and I've even started my own course platform, Algos with Michael, for learning the patterns to many algorithm topics. So definitely check it out if you're planning to interview. Now onto the video. One of the first things that comes to mind when I reflect on my two years at Google is surviving two layoffs that Google did. I'm very thankful to still have a job. It was very nerve wracking when all of the layoffs were happening. The first layoff that Google did was back in January of 2023 where they laid off 12,000 people. I remember at this time, there was a lot of backlash, not only because it was just so many people, but also because it felt like they laid off people at random. Even people that had been at Google for 10 plus years, you know, that have a lot of knowledge and, you know, very specific experience for Google, they were letting those people go. Currently, I have multiple teammates that have been at Google for over 10 years and they're all kind of like wizards. You know, you ask them any question, they will likely know the answer. Fortunately, no one on my team was affected by these layoffs, but to lay someone like that off has a real effect on the productivity of the entire team. When this layoff first happened, I had been at Google for about a year, so I felt pretty scared naturally that my job was at risk, especially because, you know, I had left a very comfortable job uh, before working at Google. So uh, I was I was pretty nervous, honestly. Fast forward to January of 2024, like clockwork, nearly a year later, Google did another round of layoffs. Granted, it was at a much smaller scale. I think it was about a thousand versus 12,000 previously, but it's still scary nonetheless. When talking to people around this time, it felt like morale was pretty low. It seemed like this was just a new normal that not only Googlers felt, but the rest of the industry. I remember during this time, so there's this tool called MemeGen. It's an internal tool to Google. And exactly how it sounds, you can post you know, different memes, usually relating to the company. And yeah, there was just a lot of <laughs> memes shitting on the company essentially because people were very unhappy about the layoffs. A big reason I believe no one on my team, including myself, was affected by these layoffs is because of how critical the work is. I'm on the OAuth team, which is part of Core, and millions of people depend on these services to function properly. First and third party apps both have an ever increasing dependency for our team to deliver on our tasks. So essentially, wherever you see like a, a sign in with Google button, the OAuth team is obviously handling uh, a lot of that backend logic. So, so many apps depend on our services to work. Definitely over the past two and a half years, I've become a lot more comfortable on the team and just being at Google in general. Right now, I feel immensely more comfortable with Google specific tools. So if you watched my one year update video, you'll know that this was a challenge for me when I first started. You know, I worked at a startup and a mid-sized company where I was doing, I was using a lot of open source tooling. And I guess when I joined Google, everything is internal to Google. And this was kind of like a big shock for me because pretty much everything that I had learned up to that point I'm not going to say it was completely irrelevant, but it didn't matter as much. It was almost like I was I was starting from zero, uh, learning all of these different internal tools that Google had. So this was a, a really challenging piece to joining Google in the beginning. Obviously, now, two and a half years later, I feel way more comfortable. Um, so that has definitely uh, put my mind at ease. I'm also just a lot more familiar with parts of the code base now. I do all of my work primarily in Java and I do a bit of C++ now. And yeah, at first, you know, I'm sure like every job when you first uh, are looking through the code base, you're just like, man, what the hell is going on? This is so confusing. But now after so many years later, I do feel like there are many portions of the code base where I'm like, okay, I know exactly what this does. I know what this does. So I guess that just comes with time. I've also gained a lot more OAuth specific knowledge, which obviously comes with the territory of being on an OAuth team. Um, there's a lot of very specific technical details that comes with 
you know, learning OAuth. So uh, yeah, that was a little bit challenging in the beginning as well. Um, I had OAuth experience before that, but once again, it, it just felt like very different uh, in Google specifically. I don't know if it's maybe because of the scale, but uh, yeah, it took a little bit of time to kind of get comfortable with some of the very specific details. Another thing about this team is I'm part of an OAuth support rotation. So the way you can think about this is like, if you were to go ask questions on Stack Overflow, right? Anyone can go and answer your question. Well, internal to Google, there's a tool called Yaks and it is essentially Stack Overflow, but only for Googlers. So you can go ask whatever technical question you want and other Googlers will go help answer your question. Part of my uh, job is I'm on a rotation that uh, for a whole week, I will be the one that goes and answers any questions that have an OAuth related tag on Yaks. Honestly, this rotation is pretty difficult. Um, it's still not easy even at this point because there, there's very specific questions and a lot of the time it involves like digging into log sources or, you know, kind of going out and asking someone else with more expertise than you, uh, you know, about how to go about answering their question. Um, and sometimes the questions are literally like essays. So yeah, th this rotation is definitely, it is an annoying part about my job. However, I do feel like being on this rotation is what has allowed me to gain a lot more OAuth specific knowledge. Another big change that I haven't talked about on the channel is I got promoted. So about over a year ago, I was promoted from L3 to L4, which is essentially just a mid-level engineer. I believe that the comfortability is eventually what led me to promotion. You know, I became a lot more knowledgeable in the code base, you know, being able to uh, do design work. So, you know, writing documents to explain where code changes should be made and why they should be made. It's just showing that you have a deeper understanding of the systems. I think that's what led me to promotion. I also was taking on and still am taking on multiple projects at one time and completing them pretty much all the way through from the planning phase, you know, designing it, um, you know, doing all the implementation, rolling out the changes and then cleaning up any code that needs to be cleaned up. I'm pretty much doing that end to end now. I had a lot of support uh, from my manager to go up for promotion. Um, and obviously that's very important. If your manager doesn't believe that you are ready for promotion, you're definitely not going to get it. But my manager was super, super supportive uh, for me going up for promotion. When I joined Google, I was L3 and I already had, you know, a few years of experience. So my uh, manager was pretty supportive even from the very start. Uh, to help me get to the next level. The promotion process at Google involves submitting a packet to a committee, which then decides whether the promo is justified or not. So they'll look at literally the code changes that you've made, you know, over the past several months. They'll look at documents that you've written. So, you know, design docs, like I was talking about previously, they'll take a look at those. They'll look at different bugs that you've closed or are actively working on. Essentially, they just look at overall impact of your job. And this is definitely through the help of your manager. Your manager is usually the one that kind of aggregates this, uh, like these different resources and sends them to this committee to evaluate. My manager also reached out to different teammates that I closely work with to get feedback as to what it's like to work with me. You know, am I dependable? Do I complete tasks on time? What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? And so all of this feedback uh, from my teammates goes into this packet to send to the committee so that they can make, you know, the most informed decision possible. This promotion came with a pretty large pay bump split between my salary, bonus, and my stock grant. It was relatively fast as well. It took about 18 months to go from L3 to L4. And from people that I have talked to, that's relatively quick. Getting this promotion definitely came at the cost of work-life balance. I had to put in a lot of effort to not only complete projects, but try to continue learning in order to progress on the team. It wasn't the hours per week that made the work-life balance worse. 
The hours per week is normally between 40 to 50 hours, never less or more than that. The thing that made the work-life balance not so great is the amount of context switching that was required. At one point, I was on six projects at the same time, some small, some large, but having to context switch between that many projects at once is really hard. I was mentally exhausted at the end of the day from doing this. And honestly, I kind of blame that as to a big reason as to why my YouTube upload schedule is so bad because yeah, there's just always a million and one projects. And you know, after work, I am just wanting to veg out. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't really want to do any thinking with my brain anymore. One thing I have been doing to negate burnout is I've been exercising a lot more. So I got gym equipment in my garage. So I try to do some strength training and a mile run about three to four times a week. And then I also train Nogi Jiu Jitsu at a 10th Planet gym and I got my blue belt about a year ago. So I've been putting in a lot of effort into that, which has helped me take my mind off of work. Outside of the day-to-day -day work at Google, I have gotten to travel up to Northern California to work in person with my team. So I'm fully remote right now and I have been since starting at Google, but every now and then when there is money in the budget, Google puts me up in an apartment and I get to work in Mountain View for one week. There are other fully remote people on my team as well. So we try to plan it to where we all get to travel at the same time. I'm actually gonna be traveling up there in just a few days. So I'm gonna definitely share my experience with you for that trip. So what does the future look like for me at Google? Am I going to stay for 10 plus years? The truth is, I don't know. The longest I've ever worked at a job is three years, which was my first job in the industry working at a startup. Of course, switching jobs, you can always make more money, but I'm pretty happy working on the OAuth team and being able to work remotely. And the money is really good as well, so there isn't much to complain about, honestly. If you like me sharing my thoughts on working at Google, like and subscribe to help build the channel. It means a lot to me. Also, check out my coding interview prep website, algoswithmichael.com, so that you can learn the patterns for a variety of algorithm topics commonly asked in technical interviews. Specifically for my YouTube audience, you can use the code ALGOHELP for a discount on the platform. Also, if you sign up for the newsletter, you can get access to five free lessons relating to sliding window problems. That's all I have for you all today. Catch you next time.